Um, structure the atom. So if you look at your periodic table, it gives you all your information about the atom. Okay, I have three examples behind me on the board of information that would be on a periodic table. And you received a periodic table from me already. Your atomic number, which is always the whole number, okay, no decimal point, in any box on the periodic table, that will always tell you your number of protons. Okay. If we're dealing with an atom that is neutral, meaning it does not have a charge, it's not what we call an ion, then this number will also represent the number of electrons. Because if it was neutral, you need the same number of positive and the same number of negative charges. Okay. The mass number is another number we look at with atoms. And let me tell you up front, it's not the atomic mass. Atomic mass, that is something that you get from the periodic table. Mass number, you cannot get from the periodic table. What is your mass number? Your mass number is your number of protons, which is your atomic number. And then it also includes the number of neutrons. So your mass number is always protons plus neutrons for your any given atom. So how do you find neutrons then? Okay. Nothing here is going to tell you neutrons. You always have to do the math. Take your mass number, take away your atomic number, and that'll get you neutrons. There's two different ways to give you information about a specific atom separate from the table. So the periodic table, what you see on any given periodic table is an average. It's a weighted average. We'll talk about it in class tomorrow. But this is not representing any one given atom. It's giving you an average of any atom that you could encounter. On the screen here, it gives you two examples of ways I can give you information on one particular atom. Okay, if I want to tell you how many protons and how many neutrons there are in one atom, I can do it one of two ways. I can give you the shorthand notation, which is the name of the atom, and then a line. What is 12? This is the mass number. And I already told you that mass number is neutrons plus protons. So I'm giving you the mass number. I'm giving you neutrons plus protons. Another way you can show um, what is in any given atom is using subscripts and superscripts instead. So instead of writing carbon 12, you could do just the big letter C, which is the uh, symbol for carbon. Up, you would put the mass number. Down, you would put the atomic number. And why we do this is to be able to do calculations. Okay? Given the shorthand <coughs> notation or the uh, superscript subscript notation, you should be able to determine number of protons as well as number of electrons. What we know about that is 12 is, is its mass number. And mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons. Okay? So a shorthand, you have to do some work. You need to get out your periodic table. Because 12 tells you protons plus neutrons, but you need your number of protons to get to your neutrons. Your protons are always on your periodic table. So if you get out your periodic table and look at carbon, you can see the atomic number is 6. So if I ask you for this atom, how many protons you have? You have 6 protons. And protons is usually just a P with a plus. How many neutrons do you have? Well, again, your mass number is protons plus neutrons. So if you take away protons from it, you'll just have neutrons. So if you take 12 minus the 6 protons, you'll get 6. And that's your number of neutrons. Okay. So this particular atom, carbon-12, has 6 protons. It has 6 neutrons. And then if it's neutral, so no charge, how many electrons will it have? It'll have the same number of electrons as it has protons to make it electrically neutral. The subscript superscript is nice because you don't need your periodic table. I give you the atomic number there so you wouldn't have to look it up. 